Good evening, and welcome Durham Catholic students and families to the College and Apprenticeship Information Session. My name is Claudine Longo, and I am a Pathways Coordinator with our board. We will open with our land acknowledgement. Good evening. We respectfully acknowledge that we here in the Durham region are on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island. Gathering as a community, we will say a prayer together. We will begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. Send your spirit upon these students and fill them with your wisdom and blessings. Grant that they may devote themselves to their studies and draw ever closer to you, the source of all knowledge. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tonight's agenda is as follows. Ms. Vipond from Durham College will present on the college application process and share general information. Next, Ms. Campbell from the Ministry of Labor Training and Skills Development will present information about the apprenticeship pathway. Following these overviews, we will post a link to the individual college and apprenticeship breakout rooms where you can ask specific questions to the representatives. Please do not post questions for either speaker in the Teams chat, as they will also be hosting breakout rooms. I will now pass it over to Ms. Vipond, who will speak for approximately 20 minutes. Amazing, thank you so much. So my name is Marissa Vipond, and I am a recruitment officer with Durham College. But during this portion of the presentation, I am here to speak with you about college in general. So I'll be talking a bit about the college application process, a bit about what you can expect from college education, um, and just a good general overview about college education in Ontario. As Ms. Longo mentioned, uh, if you do have questions after these presentations, we're happy to answer those. I will have a separate breakout room. So if you have general questions about college, after this portion of the evening uh, and you're not sure who to connect with, please feel free to come into my breakout room after. I'm happy to try and help out. As well, if you have questions and maybe you have a program in mind, but you're not 100% sure who to connect with, again, feel free to come into my breakout room. Um, I've been doing this for a few years now, so I do know a bit about all the different colleges. And again, I'm happy to direct you to the different college breakout rooms. So I do have a presentation for you. So just give me one moment and I will pull up that presentation and we will go over the college overview. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna talk just a bit about what you can expect from college in Ontario, a bit about the application process. Uh, if you've had students in your family who have applied to college before, uh, there is a little bit of a difference with the application process this year, which I definitely want to mention. Uh, and then as well, different ways to connect with us uh, and different ways to do your research as well. OK, so a bit about colleges in Ontario. There are a number of different uh, colleges throughout the province. Uh, we're lucky in the Durham region, in the GTA, we have a lot of colleges that are quite close to us. So if you or your student is looking to stay close to home, looking to commute, uh, there are a number of different uh, close options within the GTA. But maybe you have a student who wants to move away from home for their college experience. And again, lots of different options throughout the province to consider. So when you're looking at college education, what is the advantage of college education? College education is career focused. We're making sure that uh, in your program, you are getting the skills and knowledge you need to be career ready if you're in a diploma or a degree program. You'll find that a lot of the programs at the college level 
are the name of the program is the career you're going to go into. So if you want to be a dental hygienist, for example, you're going to go into dental hygiene. If you want to be a social service worker, you're going to go into social service worker. So that is a nice thing about college programs. You can really tell by the name of the program what uh, careers you could be going into from that. So very big focus on making sure you are career ready, getting those uh, job skills. Uh, and that kind of goes hand in hand with experiential learning, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Also at college, we're really big on research and entrepreneurship. Basically, every college at or every college in Ontario has some sort of entrepreneurship supports. Um, many of them do have entrepreneurship offices for students. So if they want to start their own business while they're a college student, there are often supports at the college level to assist them with that. There's even programs in entrepreneurship if that's something that you're interested in. And all the colleges have applied research. So they have different areas uh, of research that they focus on. So if you want to get into uh, any specific research areas, you might want to look at the different colleges and see what their areas of applied research are. And then, as I mentioned, experiential learning. So experiential learning is a huge part of college education. It's probably one of the most well known parts of college education. Again, with getting students career ready and job ready, experiential learning plays a huge part of that. So, so through experiential learning, this is uh, the opportunity to use the skills and knowledge that the students have learned in class and apply them to a real world experience. That could be through things like a paid co-op, like a field placement opportunity, uh, like international travel opportunities once it is safe to do so. It could be some sort of community uh, project they're working on in their program. So again, really good thing to look into and ask about when you're connecting with the different colleges today. If you're looking at a certain program, what are the experiential learning opportunities? What are the connections that that program has with industry? Because that's a huge part of college education. Again, getting you career ready, job ready, and connecting you with industry and making sure what you're learning is up to industry standards. So when you're looking at college, we have quite a few different options. So some of our options include apprenticeship, uh, which we'll hear a bit more about later in this presentation. Um, Ms. Campbell will be speaking about that. Certificate programs. Certificate programs are typically one year programs. Uh, there are some certificate programs that will get you job ready, but there are quite a few certificate programs that are a great option for students who aren't 100% sure what they want to study. Maybe they have a general area of interest uh, that they're interested in, but they're not 100% sure what specific area. Maybe they really have no idea, uh, but they just kind of want to get into the college environment and use the college workload. Certificate programs are a great option to consider. Diploma and advanced diploma programs are typically uh, the most common programs you'll find at colleges. So those are two and three year long programs. Often those will have some sort of field placement involved in them. So again, that experiential learning opportunity. And colleges do offer degrees. So that's a great thing to ask the college reps about today. What degree programs do you offer at your college? So they are four year degree programs. They're the same credential as a university degree. Great thing about college degrees is you're really getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the uh, hands on learning, practical learning you'd expect from college and you're also getting the theoretical learning from that degree program. So really great thing to consider. Uh, college degrees are in very specific areas as well. Uh, so again, when you're connecting with the college reps today, ask them about the different degree programs they offer. And then there's graduate certificates. So uh, coming straight out of high school, you wouldn't be looking at a graduate certificate. Maybe if you've done um, some post-secondary education, already gone to college, already gone to university, and you're looking at a one year program again to get some hands on learning, some practical skills and help you specialize in a certain area. A graduate certificate could be a great option to consider. So for admission requirements, again, when you're connecting with the college reps today, you'll want to connect with them and double check what exactly the admission requirements are for your program of interest. In general, you need your high school diploma, your Ontario secondary school diploma or mature student status, which is being 19 years of age or older and not having an Ontario secondary school diploma. You would still require all other admission requirements for your program of interest. Uh, prerequisites for certificate and diploma programs always requires a grade 12 English at the C or U level. 
and then there may be additional admission requirements as well. If you're looking at a degree program at uh, a college, U or M level credits are required. So if you've looked at degree programs at universities, you'll see that same thing. It's the U or M level credits and there would be specific course requirements. And then there could be supplemental requirements. All that means is it's a requirement that's not a high school course. So it could be something like a portfolio of artwork. Uh, maybe you have to do an interview. Maybe there's an entrance test. There's only a handful of programs, I would say, that have supplemental requirements. Most programs do not. But again, something to ask the college reps about today. Does this program have supplemental requirements? What are they? How do I submit them? All of that good stuff. And then your pathways from college. So obviously many people will look to go straight into a career after college, which is great. Other options can include going into a degree. So many college programs do have pathway options to go into a degree program. So you can use your college education to transfer into a degree. As I've already mentioned, graduate certificates, you might be looking at doing a one year graduate certificate program to help you specialize in a certain area. And if you are doing a degree at a college, uh, as I said, it's the same credential as a university degree, so you can go you can look at going into master's programs or professional programs from uh, a college degree. So lots of different pathway options from college programs. So once you uh, are starting your research, uh, not 100% sure who to connect with, uh, if you are looking for a bit more information, you can always connect with a recruitment team at a college. So again, the college representatives that will be here today, they are from recruitment teams. They can uh, talk to you about different programs we, are, we all offer, the application process. So please be sure to connect with the different recruitment teams. We are happy to help. OnTransfer is a great website if you are looking at those pathway options, starting in a college diploma uh, and then going into a university degree. On transfer has information about all the different transfer opportunities from public colleges to public universities in Ontario. And of course, connecting with the Future School of Interest through things like uh, virtual open house events and events like tonight. Now the application, pro uh, the application has now opened <laughs> and it is on ontariocolleges.ca. Uh, OntarioColleges.ca is also a great place to do research. If you go to the Programs tab on there, you can search through all the different programs on, on, uh, in, on, at Ontario Colleges. So applications for September 2022 intake have now opened. The timeline, so applications are now open. The equal consideration deadline is February 1st, 2022 for September 2022 intake. What that means is that's a deadline that programs can start to fill. They can start uh, giving out offers of admission to fill the programs. Uh, that is really important for highly competitive programs. Another thing I want to talk to the college reps about, what programs are highly competitive, what programs do you get more qualified applicants and seats available. November 1st is a new date for us this year. Uh, this is our earliest offer date. So you could apply in October, let's say. If you're applying for a program that's not highly competitive, the earliest date that a college could give an offer of admissions out now would be November 1st. And that date used to be the equal consideration deadline of February 1st, but now colleges can start giving out those November 1st uh, or after that date uh, offers of admission. So February 1st, really important to apply by or for those highly competitive programs because that's when offers can start going out for highly competitive programs and programs can start to close. Uh, but if you're applying to a program that's not highly competitive, it's possible that you could hear back even earlier than February 1st. And then May 1st is the confirmation deadline. Always really important to actually confirm an offer and let us know what college and what program you're going into. So applications open now. February 1st is the equal consideration application deadline. But if you're applying for a program that's not highly competitive, it's possible you could start to receive offers as early as November 1st. Our supports once you get to college, uh, you will have a student advisor once you get to college. They're there to help you with really anything you might need. If you have questions about your program, not sure who to turn to, you would chat with our student or your student advisor. Career services, like I said, our, pro our, our colleges are here to get you career ready. So career services is here to support. Accessibility and counseling services. So if you have an IEP from high school that does not follow you from college or to college, 
Uh, so you'll want to connect with the accessibility and counseling services at the college you're going to. And if you need any sort of academic support, you'll want to connect with uh, the accessibility and counseling service at your college. And then academic success centers are there to help with things like peer tutoring, workshops, uh, anything with your classes to help you be as successful as possible. In terms of financial assistance, OSAP is a very popular option. Students will uh, often apply for OSAP and can receive grants and or loans. The OSAP application uh, for the September 2022 intake, typically it will open in the spring if it follows the uh, typical process as it has in the last few years. Likely in spring 2022, that application will open. There's also scholarships, awards, and bursaries. That's the free money. Uh, so go onto websites like Wyconic and Scholarships Canada for scholarships, bursaries, and awards that students can apply for. You might be able to make some money through experience learning, things like a paid co-op position, and there are on-campus jobs available as well. So our advice, our big takeaway when you are researching college, do the research, that is the biggest part. So you're here today, you're already taking that first step. That's great. Connect with the different colleges that are here today. We have quite a few, it's great. We have quite a few different colleges from throughout the province available to speak with today. So take the time, go into their breakout rooms, ask those questions and see what could be a good fit for you. Visit us, obviously things are looking a little bit different right now, but most if not all the colleges do have uh, virtual tours available. Uh, also, we'll be having virtual open house events. So we've changed our in-person open house. Many of us have changed them to virtual open house events. So you can still connect with faculty uh, and different student services during those virtual open house events. And then of course, be sure to actually apply. Be sure to get that application in on ontariocolleges.ca. Uh, we recommend doing that sooner rather than later. Don't leave it till January 31st because Everyone leaves until that day and you don't want the site to crash. You don't want to be worrying about getting supplemental requirements in. Do yourself a favor, get that in at least a couple of weeks before February 1st or the applications are open now if you are interested in applying. So that is it for my college overview. I am going to pass it back on to uh, Ms. Longo. But again, if you do have questions about college, just general college questions or you're not 100% sure which college to be speaking with, uh, please come to my breakout room after and I'm happy to help. Thank you, Ms. Vipond, for this informative overview. Now I will pass it over to Ms. Campbell, who will speak for approximately 10 minutes. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, this is uh, really exciting and I'm glad to be a part of this. Um, so to start off, uh, I'm just going to share my deck. I promise I'll try to keep it as uh, quick as possible. Okay. Okay, so to start. So what is a skill trade? So we will be looking at the basics here. So what's a skill trade? Then we're going to be looking at um, how students can explore the trades while still attending high school. And then we're going to do a super brief discussion about um, the pathway from a apprenticeship to a journey person. And then we're also going to touch gently on uh, some of the financial incentives that are available for apprentices and sponsors. So what is a skilled trade? So a skilled trade is essentially an occupation that requires a specific skill or a set of skills. In Ontario, there are more than 140, so there are quite a few uh, to choose from. And it seems that as our economy is evolving, Ontario is just continually adapting with it to the point where one in five new jobs at the end of 2021 are gonna be trade related. So how does the system work? So it's essentially a formal training process that combines two forms. One, it's 90% hands-on learning. So what do I mean by that? I mean going to the job site, I mean learning uh, side by side uh, with experienced uh, journey persons, 
um, who are going to teach you uh, some excellent tools and techniques. So that is the bulk of the time um, of the training that you'll be doing. The remaining part is about 10 to 15 percent, and that's where uh, you will be going to what we call TDA, so training delivery agents. So these are colleges, um, these are unions, actually even some school boards um, are considered training uh, delivery agents. So you go to uh, in class, you do for a set period of time, approximately eight weeks per level, and there are about uh, depending on what trade you're in, again, 140, um, you can do uh, up to three levels of schooling. So the trades are now divided into two categories. You have your compulsory trades, which are um, basically it's required by law to do an apprenticeship um, with the government to practice in that particular trade. So examples would be plumbing, steam fitter, electrician. And then you have your voluntary trades, which are not required by law, but I highly recommend that, um, that you do the government program. So some examples of these trades include things like painter, roofer, floor covering installer. The, the 140 trades are actually grouped into four different areas. So we have service, um, we have motive power, so uh, basically all trades uh, that relate um, uh, uh, to uh, motors, construction trades and industrial manufacturing. I'm not going to go into each one of those because we would be here all night <laughs> and then some. Um, so just to give you a general idea, so tool and die would be an industrial general machinist, a mold maker, welder. Motive power, it's not just the cars. You're also looking at motorcycles. You're also looking at um, uh, boats, the whole shebang. Um, and then there's service industry. So this is cooking, uh, bakers, hairstylists, uh, CDP, so child development practitioners, arborists. And then your construction, so your electrician, general carpentry, brick and stone mason. So how can you explore the trades and figure out if this is an area for you while still attending high school? So your generation is pretty lucky because you have four options to, you know, dabble into uh, the trades. So first you have your specialist high school majors, right? So this is specifically aimed at like grade 11 and 12s, where you get to focus on um, uh, a career path that matches your interests while still getting a high school diploma. Then you have your dual credit programs where you can take apprenticeship courses um, that will count towards, uh, again, your high school diploma. Then you have your, your co-op, which is something that your parents would be more familiar with uh, in terms of apprenticeship. So this is, um, again, you do a work placement while attending high school. And then you have a, a more recent um, progress, which is your Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. So this is basically a program that really bridges that gap from um, going from school to uh, the workplace. I will tell you um, that based on last year's statistics, more than 95% of those that participated in OEF um, were employed and remain employed. Um, so it's definitely a great way to uh, get your foot in the door in the workforce. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this um, because you do have experts at your disposal. Um, but I will just say that again, the OYAP program, so the three pieces that you need to look at um, uh, to be eligible is to be enrolled in school, part time, full time, doesn't matter. Um, be at least 15 years of age. We've recently dropped um, that so uh, you can attend a little bit younger and have completed at least 14 credits. At the end of your OYAP time, um, you'll be graduating high school with a registered trading agreement, which is uh, basically a signed contract between you and your employer to say, I'm going to commit to uh, becoming certified and my employer is committing to helping me get to uh, to achieve my career goals. Also, the uh, you're, you'll be graduating with a membership with the Ontario College of Trades, which is mandatory if you're doing an apprenticeship. Um, big ticket item, a portion of your on the job training requirements are already completed. 
Um, so if you have to do, say, 7,200 hours to complete your trade, uh, you could potentially be walking away with already 500 hours in your pocket. Um, and then your level one in school training already completed. So what does that mean? That means, say, if you have you're in a trade like general carpentry and um, you have three levels to complete, you've already done one. So you're a third of the way done. Um, again, like I said before, I'm going to point you to your high school guidance counselor to have uh, a more in-depth discussion uh, with them if you are interested in OYA. But of course, um, I'm still going to be available during the Q&A session. So by all means, uh, you can uh, have a chat with me. All right, so outside of high school, if you're interested in getting into the trades, these are uh, the general requirements. So first of all, you have to be employed. OK, so you have to have someone that's willing to uh, sponsor you, uh, which is essentially your employer. Um, you have to be 16 or older. You have to meet the education requirements. Now, the, I'm going to flag this for you, uh, particularly for the Q&A period. Um, each trade has a different requirement for education. Generally speaking, most of the trades require a grade 10 or they require um, your grade 12. There are some trades available that um, will accept uh, as low as grade 8. And then last but not least, do you have permission to work in Canada? AKA, do you have a SIN number, social insurance number? So the key components in this one, um, which again is this is for anyone in Ontario that wants to become an apprentice. So as I said, Key point, you find your sponsor, you apply online, because this can all be done online now. You register essentially a contract between you and your employer saying, yep, I'm committing on both sides to, to make this happen. You become a registered member on the Ontario College of Trades, which is just like, you know, your teachers, they have to become members of the um, College of Teachers. And then you complete your hours. Um, so you complete your hours, uh, for your practical hours, you also get hours for going to school, um, depending on your trade, four to five hundred hours for going to school as well. At the end, as I said, as you would have gathered from that little picture, um, everybody would walk away with a certificate of apprenticeship to say that you've done it, you've done your hours, and you've done what's required of you. Um, there are some trades that will also ask for a certificate of qualification. So how do you get that? is basically you complete your apprenticeship and then you call my office, to be honest, uh, the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development. You say, hey, I'm ready to write my exam. You book a time and then you write the exam. And at the end, um, if you're successful, uh, you get this little guy, which I'm sure you will have seen um, in pretty much every hair salon that you go to. That little red seal, now, this is a game changer, um, particularly for your generation, wasn't offered before. Um, so the Red Seal is, it, for those that are interested in traveling, those that like to move around province to province and whatnot, um, this is great because if you get trained in Ontario to, say, be a plumber, you can go anywhere in Canada and still be recognized for the skills that you gained while in Ontario. You don't have to do any extra qualifications to practice anywhere uh, across Canada. Um, I will say there are 50 trades right now um, that are considered Red Seal trades. And if you just want to know a little bit more about that, uh, check out the website. You can just Google it, say uh, redseal.ca. Well, last but not least, this government in particular is very invested in apprenticeship for the obvious reason that we are starving for people um, to uh, get into the trades. So not only are you looking at um, a good job security and, and uh, a healthy um, wage, you're also looking at supports from the government. So for example, there's the tools grant, which is 600 bucks um, to, well, depending on what trade you're in, it ranges from four to 800, um, which will be uh, counted towards getting your tools. So you're not too far out of pocket. There's other training subsidies and supports. There's money for when you're going to school. Um, so the eight week block uh, where you are not um, making money on the job site, 
um, you have two options. You can either um, apply for employment insurance, so the feds will give you money to go to school, and if not, we will. And uh, we will give you almost uh, the equivalent uh, to what you would be getting with EI. You also have your compl uh, completion bonuses. Um, generally speaking, you're looking at about $10,000 at the end of this of grants, so money you don't have to pay back to help you get uh, through that program. If you happen to be um, female and uh, looking at um, an apprenticeship, actually that's you're looking at it an additional $3,000. So definitely um, worth checking out. And last but not least, if you have any questions beyond our Q&A session, um, you can definitely reach out to me um, or anyone at my, my office. They would be happy to take your call. Um, there's your information. If you're outside of Durham, there are offices right across Ontario. Um, just select whatever office is close to you, pick up the phone and give them a call or send them an email. Um, if you want to talk specifically about OEAP, again, I'm going to point you to your high school guidance counselor. They're going to um, uh, be able to serve you the best. Um, and then if you just have any general questions about apprenticeship, about the funds, about you know um, the, the program as it's progressing, uh, definitely check out the um, provincial website. Just make sure that you're looking at the Ontario website um, because it does uh, range from province to province. And that is me. I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Ms. Campbell, for this informative overview.